Hi, I'm James West, CEO of Midas Letter Portfolio Advisors Limited and publisher of the Midas Letter at MidasLetter.com. Midas Letter is the journal of investment strategy of the Midas Letter Group of Funds. Prophecy Platinum, trading under the symbol NKL on Canada's TSX Venture Exchange, is the subject of today's Asset Site Tour. The company is developing the Wellgreen Platinum Gold and Base Metals Project near Burwash Landing in Canada's Yukon Territory. We're going to examine 25 key considerations that investors need to think about before determining whether NKL and companies like NKL are an appropriate investment for their portfolios. Those 25 items fall under five categories. The company's flagship property is the Wellgreen deposit. Wellgreen is 257 kilometers northwest of the capital city of Whitehorse and just 35 kilometers north of the town of Burwash Landing. 15 kilometer gravel access road climbs a gentle slope from the paved two lane Alaska Highway. Wellgreen is an ultramafic ore body that is located 402 kilometers by paved road from the deep sea port of Haines, Alaska. Company geologist Rory Calhoun took me on a tour of the Well Green project. On July 14, 2011, Prophecy announced a 43101 technical report that stipulated 10.97 million ounces of combined gold and platinum group metals in the inferred category, and an additional 1.04 million ounces platinum group metals and gold combined in the indicated category. Well Green is actually a former producing mine. Hudson Bay Mining and Smelting took out 171,000 tons from 1971 to 1973 that yielded a concentrate grading 7.4% nickel and 6.6% copper. Mining was discontinued due to low prices and complications with the underground operation. From 1973 onward, the deposit continued to be drilled and explored intermittently by a handful of companies until it was finally optioned by Prophecy Platinum Corp in 2011, who now controls 100% of the deposit. And we're here at the Wellgreen Deposit Core Shack. Where they shut down operations because this rock was spalling and basically causing a lot of dilution. They had an underground operation and we were looking at this in the, as a bulk mining scenario in which uh, we would hope that the mining hanging wall and the mining foot wall would provide the stability needed to, in order to, to mine this rock out. Okay, so in here we've got platinum, palladium, gold, copper, and nickel. If our strategy was to expand the resource, I feel confident that this whole 17 kilometer belt is mineralized. As we've seen in the Arch claims to the west and, and the Linda claims to the east, uh, we believe that this, this mineralization is continuous. If the whole 17 kilometers was as mineralized as the 2.7 kilometers from which this resource comes, it would be the largest precious metal deposit in, in, in terms of platinum, palladium, plus gold in North America. The reason I started Prophecies is really towards the end of 2009 in the wake of the financial crisis. I thought it would be somewhat of an interesting idea to start a company and looking to consolidate the assets and lo and behold, just under two years later, the Platinum has got the multi-million ounce pg and deposit. Prophecy Platinum, as I mentioned, is a relatively new company. We have already had overwhelming investor interest from some of the very major institutions. Therefore, it's not so much um, of identi identifying the, the funds, but, the, but more in selectively uh, getting the right people involved. A year down the road, you just did a big raise and you're going to spend all that money how? So uh, three areas, continued resource definition expansion, the uh, metallurgy studies to prove that the, the minerals are extractable, and then thirdly looking at that the deposit can be open pitted from a technical perspective. So we're, ve we're very confident of advancing this asset as quickly as possible towards feasibility and, and hopefully the into production. We have gone to great distance, Prophecy Platinum and its predecessor, to make sure that Prophecy owns 100% of this property. Of that, Prophecy Coal owns approximately 40-45%. That's because the asset came from Prophecy Coal. 
uh, Sprott Asset Management, one of the largest uh, resource uh, fund in Canada, uh, own around 7 million shares already and purchased in the market. And the management and insiders together own another close to 4 or 5 million shares. So I would say uh, around 65-70% of the shares exist today are very tightly held. The development of the project, are you looking for any joint venture partners? Well, sure, James. Uh, this deposit already so far has 289 million tons of inferred resource and 14 million tons of measured indicated resource, and it's looking to potentially grow a lot bigger and further. Uh, we're definitely looking for, uh, and we have already received interest from some of the largest metal traders and metal producers in the world. Yukon uh, today is one of the most mining friendly jurisdictions in the world and that's, that's been told by the Fraser Institute who consistently ranked in the last five years Yukon to be one of the top destinations in terms of mining policy uh, by the government. A PG and deposit in Yukon certainly has a lot of appeals to it. We don't envision permitting to be an issue. We have a really very great relationship with two First Nations who have uh, territorial influence over our property and uh, we found them to be very well educated, uh, communicate very open communications, and um, so we're working both with the provincial government and as well as the First Nations. Uh, we are 15 kilometers from the highway. Uh, there is not a whole lot of population in sight, um, but there is a national park approximately 15 kilometers from where we are. Um, we don't envision to be an issue, however, there is extra sensitivities and extra studies we have to obviously conduct and be careful in, in preserving the environment. Absent a National Instrument 43101 feasibility study, no determination can be made at this time as to the economic viability of this project. However, our view is that since these inferred and indicated resources come from only a 2.3 kilometer section of a 17 kilometer land package with surface expressions and geochemistry across the entire 17 kilometers exhibiting the same characteristics as the geology that contains the existing resource, the potential for expansion of this resource is extremely good. In view of the company's responses to our checklist, we don't see any big stumbling blocks to the permitting and construction of an open pit mining operation to exploit the resources currently known. We feel that the likelihood of a positive conclusion to a bankable feasibility study is also good. Drilling will continue throughout 2012 and subscribers to the Midas letter will continue to receive updates on developments at Wellgreen as they become available. I'm James West and this has been a Midas Letter site tour.